Hello, welcome to another episode of Whiskey Wednesdays. Uh, this week we are joined by Tim Brennan of the Dropkick Murphys. Uh, they, you know, they're coming out with a new album at the end of the month. Uh, turn up that dial, uh, April thirtieth. Uh, fresh off of a of a uh, a great live stream performance uh, for St. Patrick's Day to to mark the occasion. Um, you know, hey, thank you for joining us, Tim. Oh, thank you for having me. Pleasure. <laughs> right on. Right on. The pleasure's all ours. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I guess jumping right in, uh, I feel like the the most natural place to start. Uh, given the current circumstances, would be, uh, you know, how you, how you, you know, how you holding up during the uh, during the pandemic? Well, that's very sweet of you to ask. Oh, just fine. I'm sure, like anybody, there's been ups and downs. You know, right. um, uh, it was <clears throat> as as somebody who's in a band that's constantly on the road. Um, the first inkling of it when you know the the prevailing thought seemed to be like oh maybe you know we'll shut things down for a couple of weeks and we'll you know um that was at the time that was like oh okay i'll i'll rest for for a couple of weeks you know um but then as things progressed uh, you know we got a much different <laughs> we got a much different scenario um but uh yeah you know it's been fine luckily um we were working on an album so the, uh, which is now about to come out, as you mentioned, thank you. Um, uh, we started working on it last winter, uh, in the winter of 2019. And, um, you know, the idea was we were gonna come home, we came home from a, a European and UK tour in the very end of February. <clears throat> and then, you know, we were gonna do our St. Patrick shows and then finish up the record and and I think I'm sure the plan at that point was maybe to have it out by like the middle of the summer or something you know oh. and um, so you know we got home from that tour and um, uh, uh, things sort of ground to a halt there once you know we had heard we had been hearing about it but like once we, so we do, we never cancel anything for any reason ever <laughs> and uh so once i heard that those saint patrick's day shows were canceled i was like oh boy uh <laughs> thumbs up here. Yeah, yeah. um and uh so luckily you know we were able to sort of you know make the most of what we could and we did that first live stream which was kind of just a thrown together here's a place where we can do it get some cameras in there thing um and uh so um you know we were gonna come home and finish the record after st patrick's day and and that didn't happen so then uh you know everything was locked down for a while um we couldn't even get back into the studio if we wanted to uh, at, a, at the beginning, you know, because um, studios were closed, everything was just closed uh, as they were figuring out how to maneuver through everything. Um, so then um, finally, uh, the studio that we tend to use around here, um, which is a place called Q Division, um, they opened back up with certain guidelines and everything and, and um, that was probably in the be maybe in the beginning of the summer or something. Now we, I've only I've the band's been around for about 25 years. Um, I've been in the band for almost 19 years at this point, um, uh, 18, 19 years, and um, I've never had a summer off in the time that I've been with the band. So I don't think any of them have ever had a summer off. You I don't know? think so though. No. So we had this summer off, and and for once, guys just kind of went off with their families, and, and you know, uh, uh, me and Ken played a lot of golf, and you know, I, you know, just just we just had a summer, which was nice. And then as the summer wrapped up, uh, and uh, uh, summer wrapped up, and the you know fall started coming around, we went back into the studio and. It was a very different experience being in the studio uh, during these times, but we were luckily able to finish the record, and um, and now finally we've gotten to the point where it's able to come out. Um, so, the, I guess to answer your question, the the there was a, a long-winded way of saying um, 
luckily we had some things we could focus on mm -hmm. in order to pull us through to what is hopefully coming you know uh the other side um but there was a lot of times where it was like because you know like i said we've existed on the road for so long and, and to be home for such a long time was was a was crazy it was an adjustment you know oh, I, can only, I can only imagine oh, yeah. yeah yeah but i mean so you know we're you know we're, we're joined here for a good reason obviously you mentioned before you have a new record coming out turn up that dial coming out on april 30th got a chance to check out the album uh it's, it's a real heater um I guess just in the general sense, what's the feeling, you know, in the, in the, the DKM camp with, you know, with this album coming out? Uh, super excited, obviously. I mean, to think that the last record came out in 20, in the, the very beginning of 2017, I believe. That's four years ago. That's crazy to think that it was that long ago. I think it was the last time you and I chatted, actually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we're, we, uh, we're, you know, we're thrilled to be putting out something else. And on top of it, we're super excited about all the stuff on it. Um, uh, you know, I'm 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 psyched that people have heard. You know, that we've we've released a number of of tracks already, um, but I'm really excited for everybody to hear the rest of it. Um, can't wait for people to hear the first song, which I I've, uh, I'm yeah. very excited about. <laughs> yeah, uh, I feel the same way. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, and because the the Dropkick Murphys fan that I was before I joined the band in me hears that and is like, yeah. Right. So, right. so I'm, I'm so, we're so excited, so excited. Yeah, no, and I mean, in full disclosure, when, you know, I, I've mentioned before that I listened to you guys for a while, uh, for a long time, and that I, I absolutely feel that you know I share that sentiment of like you know. Being that, that fan and hearing that song and being like, oh man, like it's a yeah. it's a real ripper, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, we're we're super excited about it, and it's like it's a it it leans more towards the Irishy side of things, the album in general, I think. Um, but uh, but it's you know we we had we had a really good time writing a bunch of sort of folky songs like that. Mm. Uh, that being said, it's still obviously a Dropkicks record, so it's it's got it's got stones to it. So don't you worry about that. <laughs> don't misinterpret what I mean when I say folky. <laughs> well, absolutely. I mean, you know, so going back to Eleven Short Stories of Pain and Glory, the the, the last record, uh, it came from a very deep place. I feel, I feel it's like it came from a very personal place. I mean, you had the sure. song about the, the marathon bombing, and you had um, you know, a lot of it was centered around what was going on at the time, the, the opioid crisis, and, sure. um, you know, what was the inspiration going into this, into this record? I mean, what was, uh, what was the, the, I mean, obviously given <laughs> right. the, the pandemic, what were some of the inspirations going into this so, so obviously there was two ways we could have gone with it. We could have put out a really dark record about how everything blows, hmm. uh, or we go the other way with it, which was make the record that people are going to want to hear at the end of all of this you know what i mean like the, so uh obviously being who we are we we went with the with the second one and um and so i think it's it's um it's very lighthearted um and upbeat um and uh i don't think that people would want anything less from us at, uh, uh, after something like we've all just been through, you know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah, there you go. I mean, you know, the overall sound of the album, at least from the perspective of someone who has listened to the band for a long time, um, it, you know, it wades in the waters of both something like the Sing Loud, Sing Proud era, uh, all the way up to Signed and Sealed and Blood. Uh, it kind of has a little bit, of, a, a few flavors of, of every album <laughs> in the yeah. in the catalog. Um, while still maintaining the, the, the obvious growth that, that you know comes along with a new record and new territory, sure. um, you know what did you guys hope to achieve in that aspect? In terms of that, like in the aspect of, of growing the sound. Well, you know, we, so the the impetus for a lot of the the folkier stuff, again, quote unquote folkier stuff. So uh, I've been playing accordion for a long time, but. I play it 
a, you know, an accordion player wouldn't agree that I play accordion. You know what I mean? Like I, I can, I can do what I have to do, um, but that's about it. Um, you're walking down the street in France or Germany or something. You see a guy playing on the street, and uh, he'll blow your mind with the stuff. Especially up against Weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> yeah, and Weird Al Yankovic will also. Blow your mind. So, um, but at any rate, I started playing the accordion because I was a big Pogues fan. And, um, uh, you know, uh, long story short, I got my hands on an accordion and started to, I was, I was always fairly good at, at being able to sort of teach myself how to work my way around an instrument. So I got my hands on the accordion and started sort of learning things by ear and then that sort of progressed and like I was just like sort of casual playing along with the pose, jamming with friends accordion player when I joined the drop kicks and then obviously doing it so much you know you 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 get more comfortable and you learn different things and so there was always a few things that would happen in Pogue songs on the accordion the accordion player James Fernley uh who's just phenomenal and um uh he would there were some things that he would do that I always was was uh, my ear would go to but uh, I needed help figuring out how to do them. Luckily, he and I have become friends over the years and I reached out to him and, and uh, basically sent him a video of myself saying like, is this sort of what you're doing? And he would send me a video back with his hands playing the accordion. He would show me how to do it. And so there was two or three things that he taught me specifically that like opened up a whole different you know, sort of ball game, so to speak, when it came to how these songs, these folky songs were playing moved. Um, one of the things you can hear on Middle Finger, you can hear a lot of it on like Smash Shit Up and the opening track, Turn Up That Dial. Um, just a lot of uh, movement that I do now on the accordion that is all thanks to this guy, uh, James Fernley. Um, and uh, so that sort of made us experiment a lot more with the folkier stuff because I was playing the accordion a lot and coming up with lines and things and, and you know, we would turn them into songs. And, and so, um, again, a long-winded way of saying, you know, uh, it was fun to explore that folkier stuff that we had done in a more mature way. Um, knowing having a lot more knowledge of what we're doing now than we did back in the sing loud sing crowd days or, or whatever you know right yeah no i, I feel that uh you know you mentioned your scoring uh something else that really stood out to me and i'm sure i'm not the only one uh is the complete makeover that this that this album had which just the album cover itself has sure. the, you know the, the the old english font is gone <laughs> and uh, you know what so what went into that? Like, was that like a... So that's kind of like... <laughs> that was sort of like... That's sort of like a Clash tribute type of thing, you know? Okay. Um, and uh, there's not much more meaning behind it than, than that. We were just sort of having fun with it. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, uh, you know us. We're not going to mess with tradition too much. Right, yeah. But every once in a while, we like to go, hey, that's cool, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, man, no, I mean, I, I dig it. The, uh, right, yeah. The, the, the pre-order albums, uh, you know, the, the pre-order stuff, just the different colors and everything, I, I really yeah. like that, so. When I um, saw the color concept of the the album, I was like, I was all about it. I was like, yeah, yeah. different, love it. I, yeah, yeah it, it was weird in the way. It reminded me of like, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, but it was the oh. farthest thing away from it, but like, <laughs> The best era of television, so I mean, <laughs> right? Yeah, there you go. Right on. Now, I mean, you mentioned it earlier. Uh, you know, this year marks 25 years of of, uh, of Dropkick Murphys. Yeah. You know, how would you say this album helps to celebrate that milestone? Given the fact that you know you really can't do much to celebrate it right now with fans, um, how do you feel this album will help sort of push along that, hey, this is 25 years, this is, you know, this is a gift to you guys after 25 years. Sure. So you feel that this album helps celebrate that milestone. 
Well, I think, you know, as we sort of touched on before, sonically speaking, it's a celebratory album. Everything is very up-tempo and lighthearted. And, and, um, and then, you know, as a, as a music guy, I, I look at it as, you know, sort of the culmination of 25 years of experience uh, in, you know, um, as far as, like I said earlier, sort of maturity and, and uh, um, you know, just sort of how far the band has come, you know, even as just players, you know. Um, I, you know, when I listen to this record, um, I'm super proud of, of just sort of the musicality of it all. Um, not that the Dropkicks weren't a musical band in the beginning, you know, but I just, you know, we've come a long way as far as, as far as that sort of stuff. So, I mean, I, I, I think the, that this record is sort of the perfect culmination of, of uh, 25 years of the band, you know. If we could go on the road and support it like we won't, we, like we would want to, which eventually we'll be able to. <clears throat> but I mean, it would, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure we would find a, a, a nice, goofy way to celebrate the fact that the band has lasted 24 years longer than anybody thought it would. <laughs> I mean, or 25, compared to, you know, considering who you talk to. I mean, you 24 know. years and six months longer than anybody thought it would. <laughs> right, right, there you go, man. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know, it, and, you know, it is very, it's a very much so a, a fun record, like you said. It's a very upbeat, very up-tempo record. Yeah. Um, you know, and it sounds like you guys are just having a lot of fun on it. I mean, not saying that you guys haven't before, but it really, really leaks through on, on this record. Yeah. Um, what would you say are, were your favorite aspects of putting it together in light of that? Uh, what would you say your favorite aspects were of putting this album together? Well, you know, it was, it was interesting um, because of how we had to do it. So we had, we had, we had almost finished a number of songs before uh, COVID hit. Um, mostly the ones that people have heard so far. Uh, Smash It Up, obviously, because we released it as a single pretty early on. Um, uh, Middle Finger, Queen of Suffolk County. Um, those ones that we had sort of been doing live, we had pretty much cut those in the studio already. Maybe some, maybe like, you know, backing vocals and stuff like that weren't finished, but for the most part, you know, those were, were fairly in the can. Um, so when we did the rest of them, so that leaves, you know, uh, eight or so other songs, maybe seven or eight other songs that we had to do in a very strange way. Normally we're all in the studio together and, and you know, even if it's just sort of one dude doing overdubs, there's at least two other guys in the, in the, in the control room just sitting around. And, um, we couldn't do that this time. So we had to sort of, when we resumed, we had to sort of one by one it, you know? Um, and then, uh, you know, get to a point where like me and Ken would be there at the same time, or, you know, uh, me and James or Jeff or, uh, you know, Ken and Al or whatever. And um, uh, we got it done sort of piece by piece like that. It was, it was interesting. So our producer, uh, Ted Hutt, who is actually currently in a band with James Friendly for the folks, the Walker Rotors. Um, uh, he would normally, he's, he lives in LA, but normally he would be in Boston with us. And he's just over on the other side of the glass and you finish a take and he goes, all right, that was great. Or, you know, well, I tried this, that, and the other thing. But this time around, I would, you know, if I was say I was doing an accordion thing, I would play the, play, the, uh, get through the song. And then I'd have to sit there and wait for my phone to ring. And, uh, phone, and he would say, oh, that was great, or do that, this, that, and the other. And I would say, yep, all right, okay. And then I would hang up the phone, and then I would relay that, and we'd do it again. Sometimes we would start to do another take, and my phone would ring again, because you would have another idea, and I'd have to stop and pick up the phone and say, yeah, okay, yeah. And then, sorry, guys, we'll do that again. And like, so, so for a guy who hates talking on the telephone, I tell you, it was, it was, uh, it was a hell of a thing, but uh, we got through it. Um, you know, uh, I guess my favorite parts would be just because we had to do it like that. 
like I would go, you know, I would go and do an accord either for me or for somebody else, you know, like uh, we would hear the song one sounding like one thing uh, when we were there to do our guitar or, or accordion or whatever. And then we would leave and a couple other dudes would do their thing. And then we would come back a couple of days later and it would be a whole, a whole finished thing. And it would be super exciting to hear. And so, I mean, my favorite part was hearing it all come together because doing it one by one like that you really lose track of what you what it's going to sound like you know what i mean oh. um and you just sort of has to trust the process and the fact that ted knows exactly what he's doing and the engineers at q division are phenomenal and and um so i guess i mean my favorite part was just when i got to hear the whole thing put together and i was like oh my god it worked <laughs> you know <laughs> Uh, I can only imagine. That sounds like hell, but it also sounds like fun. I don't know. Yeah. It's like it's, it's the, the adventure of it seems intriguing. <laughs> yeah, I'll never forget. I'll never forget the experience, and it was very nice to to just sort of be in that mode of like, all right, well, what do we got to do to make it happen? We'll do it. You know. Oh. Normally, when normally when we're doing backing vocals, we would have thirty guys in a room together. Now we would do, you know, four guys. Four of us would show up to the studio. We'd all be in separate rooms and uh we just have to do it you know 15 times the four of us or, <laughs> you know? there you go right on no, i mean and so with that in mind i mean with the, the final product now out ready to go like yeah. uh, and having gone through that whole process the, the, the chop that process and, yeah. you know, um do you, do you feel like you know looking back on it, like ah, maybe this this song could have been different like in a, in a, in a better way or you know, if everybody was like live in the in the room together, or you know, it's tough to say. I don't think so, because because uh, you know, when I listen back now, I'm pretty happy with everything. That being said, for us personally, that doesn't happen until we played the songs a million times. You know what I mean? Mm. And so, like, these are songs at this point because of the situation. At this point, we've played them together a handful of times, but like before that. We, didn't, we hadn't even played them all together, really, you know? When we write, it's mostly on acoustic guitars and stuff. And um, and so recently, for the first time, like while we were getting ready to do that St. Patrick stream that we just did, um, we played the new songs all together, you know, for the first time. And, and uh, it, was, it was great. But um, so that's the sort of thing that happens when you play it live. 20 nights in a row and then you go ah you know what we should have done <laughs> you know? but you know you can't you can't dwell on that stuff it's music it's fluid so you know you know you know uh we get to the point where we'll say you know we should have done it like this and so that's how we're going to do it from now on you know what i mean like and it's like it's music so we can do whatever we want really you know right exactly there you go. I mean, you guys have shown that over the, you know, the course of 25 years. You guys are going to do what you want to do. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, so, I guess really coming down to the last question I, I had prepped, um, you know, it's, it's a two-parter, but I mean, you know, what should fans expect from this record? And what should they take away from it? What, what do you feel they should take away from it? I think that... Uh, oh, do you, what, rather, what do you hope? Okay. Right, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I hope that people uh, listen to it and um, and just sort of uh, ultimately the best thing, the best way I can describe it is like when we were just doing the St. Patrick's stream and, you know, we're, we're it was a cool setup and everything, but we're playing to nobody and, uh, you know, it's sort of a weird environment. Uh, everybody was just so psyched to be there, you know what I mean? To be doing something, to to just be able to to do anything. Excuse me. So I hope that the enthusiasm that we put into and that the songs uh, sort of are trying to pull out of people uh, on this record. Um, I I hope it just it just helps people. Uh, start to celebrate things again you know what I mean um, and uh, 
you know, like I said, we we set out to make a, a pretty lighthearted and and you know, it ends on a fairly somber note, I suppose, with "I wish you were here," uh, but not in a bad way. You know, it's sort of a, a hopeful somber and. Um, um, uh, but uh, you know, up until that, and like I said, that's not in like a bummer way or anything like that. Up until that, it's just sort of a feel good, let's celebrate what we got type of record. And um, so I, I, I just hope people come out of it feeling good, you know? Oh, yeah, I mean, I was, I was pleasantly surprised by specifically one song in particular towards the end. I was, I was brought back by it, so. Um, nice. Yeah, so I'm, I'm hope. Uh, I know I'm not gonna be the only one, so I'm hoping that, uh, hoping that everybody kind of shares the sentiment with me. <laughs> awesome. But yeah, all right. So I mean, that's all the questions I have for you. Did I miss anything? I don't know if I did. No, no, I, I think so. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. All right. Well, there you go. I mean, now we're we're there officially a month before the new record. Um, right. Remember, guys. Uh, April 30th, turn up that dial. Get yep. your free orders now. And then uh, <clears throat> and then on May 1st, we're going to play through the entire new record, plus some other songs uh, uh, to celebrate the fact that uh, the record has just come out. That's right. That yeah. too. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys very much for, for joining in. And thank you, Tim, specifically. Thank you, Tim, for, for joining us. Uh, yeah, and congrats on the new record. And again, looking forward to it. Thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. We'll see you on the road at some point. <laughs> oh, I hope so. I hope so. Absolutely, man. Well, you take it easy, all right? Man? All right. Take care. Thanks so much, man. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.